the other? No. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's start with number. Let's do number one. I'm just going to kind of do some of um, problems on this page, and the rest um, I'm going to have you guys do for homework. But um, I want to kind of, you know, after we feel comfortable with um, s equal uh, arc length, I want to move forward to 1.08. Uh, just so that we can kind of have some time to let that sink in. I think this is um, hopefully pretty straightforward and we can just go through these four problems. Um, and then once you're comfortable with it, then you can always um, come back to it and, and finish it for, uh, for homework. OK, but we'll start with number one. OK, it says find the length of an arc that subtends uh, a central angle of three radians in a circle with radius two inches. So um, we know that we're working with the formula S equals R theta. Remember that arc length is always going to be the same units as your uh, radius. So if it's radius in centimeters, then arc length is also centimeters. Make sure that your arc length is never going to be a degree measure or a radian measure. Okay. So I'd like to start this way. Um, go ahead and list out all the variables in play and then see what I can fill in. Find the length of an arc. So I know I'm looking for my variable S. That subtends, that just means that it's intercepted by the central angle of three radians. in a circle with a radius of two inches. Okay. Here's our formula, S equals R theta. The nice thing about theta is it's already in terms of radians, so there's no need for us to adjust um, the units. But if theta is in terms of degrees, then we got to multiply by pi over 180 to get it in that proper form. So S equals R theta, we have to have radians if we want to use the formula. Okay. All right, so ready to plug in. S equal to R times theta. Those values are ready for us to use. Looks like pi is already built into this num number, so uh, they're telling us the radians. We don't have pi. Um, as a unit, but it's okay. Uh, a pi as a, a value, but it's okay. But what is s going to be in terms of? Inches, good. Always matching your radius. Okay. Any questions with one? Try number two. And if you get done with two, we'll do 56 and 60, just so we can see a, a variety of uh, different types of problems, and then we can move on. Notice that we're not always solving for arc length. Sometimes we may be solving for theta, sometimes we may be solving for radius. But 
we're always going to list out our three variables and see what information we have, see what we don't have, and, and then go from there. Okay. Any questions with one or two? Okay, jump down to 56. You can try that problem. Uh, do 56 and 60. Okay. I'll go over the answers with you in a few minutes. Okay, so there's about 14, 15 problems on this page. This will be your homework for tonight. Okay. Because we're using the formula and we're solving for theta, we know that theta is going to produce radians, right? So that's all fine and good, but then the problem is also asking for us to represent theta in terms of degrees. So we do have to go through a little bit of a conversion to get that to happen, right? And we know that we were going to multiply by 180 over pi because we want the radian units to get to go away. So that we're left with units in terms of degrees. So 1.2 pi, sorry, 1.2 radian is my theta measure in terms of radians. I multiply by 180 over pi to get the radian units to go away, and I'm left with something that will put, that will be an equivalent degree measure. Okay, so how did you get 1.2? Okay, I got 1.2 uh, because I'm using this formula. So we have s equals our theta. S equals six meters, yeah, R equals five. And I just plug this in the calculator. Six over five, the same thing as 1.2. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you can just, or you can use six, six halves times 180 or pi. Either way, you'll be able to get to that fractional value. Okay. Questions with 56? Right. Try 60. Okay, careful with 60, the, the theta value they give you is in terms of degrees, so we got to make an adjustment before we can use our arc length formula, right?
All right, number 60 reads, find the radius of a circle if an arc length of four feet, so they give us arc length, you know that's variable S. On the circle, uh, find the radius, so we know we're looking for R. Central angle, 135 degrees, so this is R theta, but it is not quite in the unit that we need, so we got to get this in terms of radians. So I need um, multiply by pi over 180. I left it in exact value, but you could have a decimal value here. Um, I just tend to like to have exact values and then save it until the end uh, just to gain a little bit more accuracy uh, with the decimals. So I left it as 3 pi over 4. I reduced this uh, 135 or 180 to be 3 fourths. So now, now that I have my theta in terms of radians, I'm ready to involve uh, my arc length equation, my arc length formula. So S gets replaced with 4, R stays as R, that's a variable I need to find, and I need to uh, replace theta with 3 power 4. Okay, I want to solve for R, so I want to divide by 3 power 4. This is a fraction though, so I just want to make it a little bit cleaner. Rather than dividing by a fraction, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. It just makes it a little quicker, a little easier, less complexity. So uh, I just multiply by the reciprocal here. So divided by 3 pi over 4 is the same thing as multiplying by 4 over 3 pi. Um, so it's 4 times 4 over 3 pi. That's 16 over 3 pi. Enter in your calculator and you get 1.698. The homework is the entire page? Yes, yeah, it's about 14, 15 problems. Okay, uh, but uh, I want us to start the next section so we can kind of have a bit more time to, to kind of let those um, concepts sink in and then um, we'll be able to have um, entire Thursday to review. Yes, question? Uh, uh, you shouldn't have to. Okay. You shouldn't have to. No, you don't have to draw it out. I think you should be. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, I do want to point something out here. When you're dividing by, when, div uh, when you enter in your calculator, uh, ideally, if you want to get a decimal value, ideally use this um, the n over d feature. That uh, see that box over box. Get that 16 over 3 pi to show up. Uh, if you can get that feature, that will be the best. Um, the potential issue is when students do this, when they do 16 divided by, what's happening there is the calculator doesn't know the order of operations that you want it to do. So it's doing 16 divided by 3, and then it's multiplying by pi. So that's going to give you some troublesome number there. So if you want to use that division sign, you have to use parentheses then to give it that order of operations so the calculator knows that you want the entire 3 pi in the denominator. All right. So just something to point out, if you have that uh, math print feature, um, I would suggest you use that. That way you don't have to worry about using parentheses when creating um, order of operations. Um, do you want us to read the approximation sign? Uh, if, if there's an equivalent value, then you can leave it as an equivalent value. Um, but if I wanted a certain form, I will specify in the directions. Okay. Yeah, so I think there will be some problems on the quiz where it says exact value, and other times it'll say um, give um, um, uh, round to two or three decimal places. Okay. Yeah, so we'll rely on the directions. Okay. All right, any questions with these types of problems? Okay, you're using you want just using one formula, but then we've got to be careful with theta, um, adjusting it accordingly uh, when we need to. Okay, all right, let's go to uh, so um, page 19 is your homework. I want to go ahead and start 1.08.
Okay, so we're on page 20. All right, so let me read the notes here. Coterminal angles. Coterminal angles are angles that have the same terminal side. So terminal side just means the ending side of your angle, right? So not only are coterminal angles created uh, by measuring an angle both in the negative and the positive direction, but they can be created by doing more than one revolution. So angles can measure more than 360 degrees. If it does, that just means that we're rotating multiple times, more than once around the circle. Right. So uh, here's a quick example of a coterminal angle. So let's say I have uh, an angle that's measuring 30 degrees. If I take that terminal side and if I rotate it one more time around the circle, then I'm back to where I'm started. It's the same terminal side, but it's a different angle because I added 360 to it. So that means 30 degrees and 390 are basically the same angle because uh, that terminal side is is going to overlap, right? So we can find basically we can find coterminal angles by adding or subtracting 360 uh, to whatever angle we have in front of us. So coterminal uh, angles can be found at the same location, just another revolution, more or less. Okay, so to find coterminal angles, we must add or subtract 360, and we'll end up in the same location for that terminal side. Now that's in terms of degrees, right? If theta is in radians, then we're going to be add or subtract 2 pi radian to find coterminal angle. So it really depends on what unit we're dealing with, right? If we're dealing with degrees, we'll get add or subtract 360 to, uh, to, figure, uh, to add or subtract the rotation um, to get that terminal side to line up with where what we started with. But if our theta is in terms of radians, we can also add or subtract 2 pi and we'll you know, basically um, um, achieve the same result. Okay. So let's try some of these examples. Example one, find one positive and one negative coterminal angle for the given angle. So if it's a degree measure, we're just going to add 360, find that angle. Subtract 360, get a negative version of the same um, angle, and write those down. So, so both these angles have the same terminal side. They're both going to end up in the same location. It's just a different revolution around the circle. So that's one positive and one negative. Okay, try part B.
Now, if you added another 360 or if you subtracted another 360, then you could have two more coterminal angles, and those are perfectly acceptable as well. Right? So I just chose the ones that are closest to negative 34 degrees. Right. So now, any questions so far? Okay, so now moving on to an angle that's in terms of radians, we can add or subtract 2 pi. Okay. Um, without a calculator, I'm just going to add uh, 2. I'm going to find a common denominator, so 7 over 6. With a, uh, If I want to create 2 with a denominator of 6, I can make the numerator 12. If I want to find a coterminal angle that is 2 pi away uh, in the negative direction, I can subtract 2 pi. So I have a negative and a positive coterminal angle in terms of radians. Now, if you're using your calculator, if you're using your calculator, you can just do 7, 6 plus 2 or 7, 6 minus 2. Make the calculator find the common denominator for you and leave pi out of the calculator. Just add pi at the end. If you add, if you put pi in the calculator, it's going to give you a messy decimal value. So if you want to do 7 over 6 plus 2, 19 over 6, and just take that and add pi at the end. Don't put it in the calculator. And once you have, you can do 7 over 6 minus 2, and that'll give you negative 5 over 6, and then add the pi. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, can we ever identify all the coterminal angles? I mean, there's just too many, right? There's infinitely many. We can keep adding 360, keep keep subtracting 360, so we have infinitely many coterminal angles. Okay, so we'll do um, some some more example of problems uh, of uh, measures that are further out uh, away. We, we use this process for angles larger than 360 by subtracting 360 from the larger angle measure until we find a positive and negative coterminal angle. So example two, we're going to find one positive, one uh, negative coterminal angle for the given angle. But now we're going to try to state the quadrant in which the terminal side lies. Okay, So these are a little bit further away, so we may have to um, subtract 360 or add 360 until we get to uh, a measure that we recognize. Okay, so 800. It's not too far away. We can subtract 360. And if it's not enough, we'll repeat that process again. If I subtract 360 again, I can get it to an angle measure that I can quickly locate. the quadrant. So I subtracted it twice because I didn't really know where 440 was. So I wanted to kind of get it into that 0 to 360 range so I can quickly un, um, figure out where that, visualize where that cur where that uh, angle is. So that's in first quadrant. But then it's asking also for a negative coterminal angle. So I'm going to subtract another 360 to get a negative coterminal angle to display. Any questions there? So it's not too bad if my measure is relatively close to 0, 360, 800, subtracting 360 twice. That's not too bad. Really? Sorry. Do we have to state the quadrant for the second? Yeah, we're going to state the quadrant for each of them. Now, I'm saying for like negative 30. Uh, well, 
these are the same angles, right? Oh. So it'll still be in quadrant one. Right? So if you just say it once, you um, it'll be they're all going to be in quadrant one because the same angle, just different different rotations. Okay, so now for part B, we could do the same thing. We we could keep adding 360 until we get to something that we recognize, but we got to do it a lot of times. It's such a it's a large it's a, such a um, large negative value. So so to make it so that we don't have to do as much punching in with numbers, let's do this. Let's have an idea how many rotations this is, and we can quickly get to that number of rotations and, and then get to our, our answer a little faster. So the way you can uh, uh, speed up this process, if you have a really large degree that is not only, that's, mo that's more than one or two rotations away, divide it by 360. Just to get an idea how many rotations, um, so that we don't have to, you know, add or subtract 360 20 times or 30 times. So I just want to have uh, the closest um, whole number value, and you can either round up or round down. It doesn't matter as long as you're relatively close. 10.4. 10.4. So you can either choose 10 or 11. It doesn't matter. But this is going to help us because we know that this is at least 10 rotations around the circle. So if I did 10 times 360, that'll give me uh, a measure that is close enough that will bridge that gap and give me an angle measure that will speed up the process to get me to a number that I can recognize. OK, yep. Yeah. So I'll do 30, 360 times 10. So this is 360 degrees rotated 10 times around the circle, but these two numbers will be close enough for me to add and subtract and get to something that I'll, I'll get to um, what I want faster. So this gives us negative 132. So that's something that we can keep, right? That is a negative coterminal angle. But maybe it's still not recognizable in terms of where it is uh, in the quadrant, so I can keep adding 360. But here, I only need to add 360 once, right? Because I'm close enough. I'm only within one rotation away from where I need to be. And which quadrant can we say 228 is in? Quadrant 33, yep. Does this shortcut process make sense? Okay. So again, if you're if you decide to choose 11 instead of 10, it really doesn't matter because either way you'll be close enough, and you, from there you'll be able to to get to your your degree measure a lot faster. Okay. So try that same approach for our part C. See if you can identify roughly how many rotations that is, and use that information to get to your your quadrant information faster. Okay, which quadrant do you guys find this to be in? Fourth quadrant, yeah. So I did I did 39.45 divided by 360. I chose 10 as a close enough uh, value. If you use 11, that's no problem at, at all. I just did 10 times 360, 3600. 3, 
So chapter 3600, and that's already getting me to a measure that I can recognize. It's a little bit under 360, but more than 270. So fourth quadrant, that's a positive coterminal angle. If I subtract 360 again, I get a negative coterminal angle. Question? Uh, B is quadrant three. Uh, the negative 132 may not be as recognizable, so I added 360 to get 228. And 228 is going to be somewhere here, right? Quadrant three. Thank you. Okay, any questions so far? Finding? Okay. All right, let's go to next page. And let's talk about reference angles. So I'm, pay, I'm on page 21. Okay, let me read the definition first. A reference angle, uh, we notate it using a theta prime, just to give it a, a, a notation there. This is the angle formed by the terminal side, that's the ending side of our angle, and the closest part of the x-axis. So sorry that I got cut off, x-axis. Let me uh, specify positive acute angle. A reference angle is always going to be positive and is always going to be acute between zero and 90 degrees. Okay. Let me um, draw out uh, the scenarios so that we can kind of visualize it here. All right. So here is a visual demonstration of reference angles. So we have a coordinate plane. I'm going to highlight the x-axis because it's important that every angle that we create is going to have to involve the x-axis somehow. Okay. Never the y-axis. You never are going to measure your angle involving the y-axis. Okay, so we got to get used to that. Okay. Now let's say I have an angle that is in the first quadrant. That's easy enough. If it's like 40 degrees or 30 degrees, it's just going to be this angle here. Okay. So if, you're, if your angle is in quadrant one, you're basically looking at the reference angle. There's no, there's not much adjustments that you have, that you have to make. Okay. Okay. If your angle is in quadrant two, then you want to make sure that you create this angle measure between the terminal side and the x-axis on the 180 side. Okay, You want to identify the closest x-axis and identify that angle measure. So I'm going to call this theta prime. Okay. So you're going to be involving 180 to help you figure out that angle measure. Okay. If your angle is in the third quadrant, then you're concerned about finding this angle measure here. That's your reference angle. So if it's 240, you'll do 240 minus 180, and that will help you figure out that angle measure that is clearly uh, in that range. Okay. And finally, if you're in the fourth quadrant, you're going to measure out this measure, this angle between the x axis. And your, but because you're in the fourth quadrant, there's going to be a pretty large angle measure, right? Somewhere between 270 and, and 359, you're going to be subtracting from 360 
to help you figure out that angle measure. So if you're in the second or third quadrant, you're going to be subtracting involving 180 to help you figure out that angle measure. If you're in the first quadrant, there's no work that needs to be done. You're already staring at your reference angle. But if you're in the fourth quadrant, you're going to subtract from 360 to help you get to that acute angle measure. Okay, so uh, basically my uh, reference angle has to be between zero and 90 degrees. But if it's in radian uh, form, then it has to be between zero and pi over two. Because okay, pi over two basically represents your 90 degree angle. And you don't have to write all this down because this is just basically what I said before. If your terminal side is in quadrant one, then your angle is a reference angle. If you're in quadrant two or three, then you're always going to be subtracting involving 180 or pi, depending on um, whether you're dealing with degrees or radians. And if you're in the fourth quadrant, then you're always going to subtract your angle from either 360 or two pi, depending on whether you're dealing with degrees or radians. Okay. OK, so let's do some uh, let's do some practice on page 21. And I'll bring this page back uh, if we need to uh, reference it. Okay. OK, so page 21, if we look at it says find the measure of the reference angle. Well, this is first quadrant. 46 degrees is already an angle measure that is formed with the terminal side and the closest X axis. And it's already displaying 46 that's between 0 and 90 so nothing more needs to be done if your angle is in the first quadrant that is your reference angle okay part b 3 pi over 4 3 pi over 4 is in the second quadrant we know we have to involve uh, the closest x-axis and because we're in the second quadrant, we know we're going to be involving pi. Right? So we can think of 180 or pi as equivalent. So I'm going to subtract pi minus 3 pi over 4. Basically 1 minus 3 fourths, or if you want to um, find a common denominator, you can say 4 pi over 4 minus 3 pi over 4 which is 1 pi over 4, which is 1 fourth pi. 1 fourth pi is clearly between my range of 0 and 1 half pi. 1 fourth is less than 1 half. So there's my reference angle. OK, any questions so far? OK, part C, 253 degrees. Let's figure out where that's located. Um, the nice thing is right now the diagram is drawn for us. We can tell that's in the third quadrant. And we need to make the angle with the closest x axis. So that means 253. We're going to use that in 180 to help us figure out that reference angle measure between these two um, rays. Again, make sure that you are never involving the 90 degree or the 270 to get your reference angle. Okay, reference angle has to involve the x axis. So if you're going to subtract anything, you're always subtracting using 180 or subtracting using 360. Yeah. Okay, any questions so far? Okay. All right, um, part D, 7 pi over 4. That is going to be in the fourth quadrant. 
less than uh, 8 power 4, but close enough where it's going to be in the fourth quadrant. So we know if it's in the fourth quadrant, we have to subtract from 360, but it's in radians, so we're going to subtract from 2 pi instead. If you're using your calculator, you can just say 2 minus 7 fourths. Or um, finding common denominator, you can say 8 over 4 minus 7 over 4, which is 1 over 4. OK, any questions so far? OK, so now we're going to put it all together. Okay. This is part E here. So now we have multiple things we need to do. OK, so if you see part E, it says 487 degrees. We're first going to identify where this is located. So we're going to try to get a coterminal angle that is more recognizable. Let's get it to something that is in between 0 and 360, and then we can find the uh, reference angle. So let me go through the steps here. Um, if your angle is too large, find a coterminal angle first. They will find a coterminal angle that you recognize or that you can place. So you're going to either add or subtract 360, or add or subtract 2 pi until you get into the range where you can place them, place that angle in the first, second, third, or fourth quadrant. Once you have that angle um, graphed and located, then you can focus on your reference angle. And your reference angle, you're always, you know, depending on the quadrant, you're going to either subtract or subtract from 180 or subtract from 360. And you do want to make sure that your reference angle lands nicely between 0 and 90 degrees. Or if it's in radians, nicely between 0 and pi over 2. OK, so let's go through these two steps for this problem here. So 487. If the graph wasn't drawn for you, um, we're going to have to subtract from 360 until we recognize um, a coterminal angle that uh, we can um, that we can place. So first step, I'm going to get that coterminal angle between 0 and 360. 487 is larger than 360, so I'll subtract 360 until I can recognize it. So 47 minus 360 gives me 127. Okay. So now I know I'm looking at 127 degrees. Which quadrant is this in? Quadrant 2, right? So if my angle is in quadrant 2, then I know I just have to involve 180 degrees to help me figure out my reference angle. So. Find your coterminal angle. We did that angle is nicely between 0 and 360. We can place it in the proper location. And now we'll find the reference angle. Second quadrant means I'm trying to figure out that measure between that angle and 180. So 180 minus 127. Fifty three degrees. That is an angle that is safely between zero and ninety. That's my reference angle.
Okay, let's do one more. Part F, negative 13 pi over three, that is not an angle that we recognize between zero and two pi. So we're gonna keep adding two pi until we get it to something that we can recognize uh, with one of the quadrants. So I'm gonna keep adding two pi to it. But I'm just gonna go ahead and find a common denominator. I'll just say it's six pi over three as my adjusted uh, two pi. Okay, not there yet. I'll keep adding six pi over three, or I'll keep adding two pi. I get negative one pi over three, not quite there yet. OK, this I recognize more, 5 pi over 3. Okay, so 5 pi over 3 is safely between 0 and 2 pi. It's close to 2 pi, but it's a little bit uh, smaller, so it's in the fourth quadrant. So if it's in the fourth quadrant, I'm going to subtract from 2 pi to get that um, reference angle. So my reference angle is just going to be 2 pi minus 5 pi over 3. Same thing as 6 over 3 minus uh, 5 over 3, which is 1 over 3, 5 over 3. So the good thing is we've covered all the new material for the quiz. We'll have tomorrow and Thursday to kind of practice this and get really comfortable with it. Okay. But tonight uh, your homework will just be from 1.07 with our left. I just wanted to introduce this so that we can have a, a kind of a day, uh, an extra day to make it uh, make it feel comfortable.